<laughs> this thing sounds killer. All right, take let it let it rip. drive review of a brand new Fiat 124 Arbat Spider. So I'm just going to give you a little walk around of some of the design cues of this car. Basically on this model you have the satin black and this is painted on, this is not vinyl. Going down the nose you have the signature Arbat nose emblem. You have the red accents which I think is really cool in this car with the red mirrors. You can see that right there. Now this particular car is based on the new version of the Mazda Miata but it has the engine from the Fiat 500, the uh, inline turbocharged four. See that, we got some red accents on the calipers. I think it's a cool little car, James. I really do, I like it. And we just tore the whole car down at the shop and we've got a full race exhaust system on it. You guys can see that there. So no muffler, no resonator, high performance cats. We did an intake and a diverter valve, but other than that, we're going to uh, strap the camera in the car. We're going to go for a drive because I've never driven one and I have not driven a Miata in about well over 20 years. So we're going to see what this thing feels like, but we were under the car at the shop and I got some footage, which I'll throw in the video uh, right now, just looking at the architecture of the five link uh, rear suspension, all the aluminum, uh, the cross brace between the differential and the transmission to stiffen up the car. Uh, it seems like it's a very well engineered piece. So let's get over to the interior. We'll show you that real quick. These awesome Recaro seats. These are very similar to what you find in the Ford Focus RS. Very nice, real Alcantara, black leather, red piping. You got a similar steering wheel to what we get in the Alfa Romeos. No start and stop button, but it's similar in shape and architecture and airbag style as well. Uh, really nice little detail of red stitching on the top of the dash and across there. There are no red accents on the doors. Not really sure why, but uh, really slick shifting. Manual gearbox, six speed. You got your little control panel there. You know, manual type control, AC and heat controls as well. So it's very basic, very sparse, uh, nothing really elaborate. This car is brand new. It has about 700 miles on it. That's just a brief overview of the exterior and what it's got. Let's pop this the power right? plant. This is the same engine from the Fiat 500 Arbarth. What is it, a 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. You can see the turbochargers right there and it's connected right to the new catalytic converter. This is the new intake that we just put on. Also, we replaced, put a high-performance diverter valve to stop with the stalling and a little bit of delay in stop-and-go traffic. So, one thing you'll see here in the chassis, you got some nice triangulation between the shock towers and the A-pillar all the way across. I mean, it's a really light car. It only comes in at, at about 2,500 pounds, right, total. And uh, so power to weight ratio. So it's got 165 horsepower, 184 foot-pounds of torque. Now with the modifications, I'm sure it has a hell of a lot more and it sounds freaking insane. So I can't wait to strap the camera in the car and show you guys. So enough talking about the exterior and the features. Let's get in the car and talk about how this car drives, the chassis, the engine, the dynamics, the sound and everything in between. So we're gonna get the camera set up right now. So come along for the drive. I love the sound, man. I don't know, to me, like a little car like this is, you want it to sound like raspy, high pitched, annoying, obnoxious. <laughs> I think it kind of, Suits everything. Transmission's really nice and direct. Yes. Right? Third gear though. It's third gear what? It's a little hard to get into? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's locking me out or if it's just I'm not positioning it right. Yeah, it goes in. Are you clutching all the way to the floor when you do yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's one of those things where... I think it might be locking me out. I don't know if it has that... Maybe you're at the wrong RPM. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this thing sounds cool, man. The one thing I wish it did have... I mean, it, it, it has power-assisted steering. I could feel it, right? If it had manual steering, I think it would, you would, like, it would be a little sportier, a little more direct. Maybe. It's one thing I noticed. And plus, we're on really crappy tires. that I can rev it out that high. I don't think it's supposed to. <laughs> Why not? I think 5,500 is the Ow. highest. Yeah, that's what it says, 5,500. Yeah, it was at 6,500. I don't think so. It just went there. I don't think it's supposed to. I mean, 
it's not like shift a... Shift it to fourth gear, right? Really. It's not... It's not like a fourth gear. I like to keep the power band up there. Come on. You have a GT350 like me. Let's go. Yeah, but this ain't that. <laughs> uh, that car's cool. You know what I actually like about it? I, I like the nose. Yeah. Like, when you're looking out of it, it's very, it doesn't uh, feel like you're in, like, this little compact car. It's got a really nice visibility. And where it looks like we're going right into a, a thunderstorm. Yeah, nice. <laughs> really well James yeah chassis is nice yeah yeah, right. yeah the car rides well yeah you're right. yeah yeah we'll put it back up on the lift and we'll see what's touching I wonder if it's the shield on the catalytic converter nah <laughs> no I don't think so it sounds like it's coming from the back middle to back honestly it's really not that loud now that the windows are no no yeah, now the windows are up in the air conditioning so <laughs> So put the stereo on, you can't hear it so at all. Guys, we did a full uh, high performance catalytic converter with downpipe and an exhaust system with no resonator, no muffler. I, I actually like listen for a four cylinder. No, oh, it sounds amazing. I love it. This sounds great. It's like a fun little zippy sound, car, you know. It sounds just like the, the five hundred. Yeah, well, five hundred. You need an alignment on the car already. Or it was never done to begin with. It's just not perfect. That's just because I notice everything. But yeah, if the car didn't have the, the hypersensitive power assisted steering, I think I would like the front end more. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, it's fun. You know what? You could just with that little transition, you could feel that five link suspension. Yeah. Pulling the car into the corner. Brakes feel good. I mean, listen, we're in a car that's like under 2,500 pounds. Yes. I mean, when was the last time I got it? The last car I got into in the past year that was that like really light was the Cobra 427 that I bought last year. That when it came off the truck and I drove it, I says, give me my money back. I don't want it. Right. <laughs> it, was, it drove terrible. But uh, no, this is fun. This is a cool car. I was questioning your decision of buying it. I'm like, what made you go out and buy this. Yeah, you were looking at old M3s, I'm looking at old M3s, we're looking at old M Roadsters, like, you know, circa like 98 to 2002. There's a lot of stuff out there too. But then we were, cool you know, we were talking about like, hey, he wanted something with a warranty. He wanted something a little unique. Right. This is the very first one that I have physically seen in my area. I just never saw this car before. And um, I was actually excited for you to come up today to do this. Yeah. It really Long was. Coming. I mean, this is, uh, this is cool. You know, like that little resonance coming into the car—it's like my Alfa Romeo does. I, I love that. Yeah. That's the character of these things. Well, you want you want to have you want to know it's alive. Yeah, ex exactly. You want to know that it's alive. Chassis feels nice. I gotta say. Oh yeah, we gotta fix that. Yeah, that's hitting the uh, one of the cross braces. There's a big bump over here. I cannot believe. See that bump right there? Yeah. Every car, it shocks the whole front of the car. This thing just went right over it. Yeah. Went out of hitch. It doesn't have a lot of power in second gear until you get going. That's the turbo. Yeah. I love this thing. This is fun. Yeah, back you know what it is? It's a different. It's a back roads. It's definitely a, a back road. That's what this car, car is. It's it's where you can it's maximize the powder weight ratio. It's not a burnout car. It's not a highway no. cruiser. No, you want to shift this car. Yeah, that's where you can maximize the you know the the, the power to weight ratio and the fun and the size of the car. Max, maximize the fun. Yeah, this is great. Like going through this road with the GT350 is fun too, but yeah, yeah. it's a lot more muscle right. and concentration to go through this road. This is cool. I wonder if the uh, exhaust system is going to get any louder as time goes on. No, well there's no muffler, so no, there's, that's no, true, yeah, there's yeah. no packing or anything to burn in. But I mean, look at this. Hey, this thing is fun, man. We need better tires on here, James. Yeah, yeah I can feel the limits of the tires immediately when you push it. I think suspension architecture is outstanding. I think the chassis is outstanding for it to ride this well. Now, this, the steering that I'm saying, like, you know, it's a little bit loose. Mm. 
if we lowered it and we put better tires and we, you know, change the center of gravity, dial in the camber, it's gonna really tighten up that front end mm. a lot. Yeah, I think we gotta put a, a, a stronger um, exhaust hanger isolator. Yeah, it's really bad one now. This thing is cool, man. We don't have any drone. We just have like a really nice if tone. I put any wood on it? If you had larger pipes. Oh, larger pipes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it does, there's no drone at all. It's just loud. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. Loud is good. I think it acted. Listen, when you pulled into the shop this morning, this thing had no sound at all. No, no. So, compared to that, like, I think if I was driving this car stock, that's why I didn't want to do the review when it's stock. I was like, I want to drive it after it's modified. Yeah, you're right, I think there's a tornado coming. Through. Yeah, it's all right. It's a shame that the weather did not hold out today. Yeah, this is... My God. Coming down, it's coming down. Yeah, this is nuts. I can barely see. Yeah. So we're just gonna take this on some uh, one of my favorite little roads up here. My God, is it windy today? So wait till you see this road. You're gonna flip out because if you if you get too aggressive. In most cars, you're gonna end up in a tree. <laughs> but this car, when we're finished with it, is gonna be the car you're gonna to wanna to come back up here and do this road and see how fast you can kinda of go through it. And that's really gonna be a testament of the handling, reaction time, braking, uh, and, a and a good chassis. Here we go. I mean, just look at this. Is this crazy? Yeah. Tons yeah. of blind spots and curves. We're getting some sound out of it. Yeah, a little bit. Well, yeah, because we got off the highway. See, this is where this car shines right yeah. now. Forget about cruising on the highway and driving to your grocery store. This is where this car belongs. Nice back road. And you know, this is where you can actually feel the power band just makes sense where you don't need something right. too aggressive right. to have some fun. I'm having a blast, man. This car is so much fun. I feel a little bit of roll in the back from the uh, the tires. Yeah. But man, this is so much fun. I mean, look at that. What better day to do it on a nice, cool fall day, right? Perfect. I mean, this is really where you get in this car and you totally enjoy it. You have no idea. Like, when you told me you bought this car, I was like, I didn't even know what it was. I was like, bring it over. I want to I drive it. <laughs> and you're like, no, I'm telling you, it's good. It's fun. It's fun. I looked into it. I'm like, all right. Well, it was, it's been out for a while, and I've seen a number of them on the road, not the Abarth version. No, I never saw one. And, uh, you know, there was a few times where I was on the road and I was like trying to catch up to them and I would follow them and take a look and I'm like, and the first time I had seen the car, I didn't know what it was, which is what happens to me a lot of times. People are like, what yeah. type of car is that? Some guy thought it was uh, an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> yeah, it's very unique looking. Which is funny that Alfa Romeo didn't make one of their, you know, make it like a little spider like they used to, right? As yeah. far as they didn't come out with it. I one. agree. But, this one. The gearbox is super smooth. Yeah. It's not as like sharp as the GT350's gearbox in like some cars, but uh, it's really nice though. Do they make a better shifter mechanism for this, like short shift, that you're aware of? I'm not that I'm aware of. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, you know, you have a pretty unique car, so aftermarket is going to be kind of limited. All I know is that you, you don't want this car in automatic. No. No way. But there's people that are buying them, like the... the These come in automatic? This, the, the Lusso version is just... Yeah, that's more know, of the luxury version. Yeah. So it's a good looking car, you know, especially if you get like the red with the tan interior, it's just show up looking. No, this is totally... This but, is uh, awesome. But they don't, they don't give you that automatic. This is awesome, really. Nice October fall day. Yeah, the engine, the engine likes the... Uh, yeah, the cool weather. I mean, look at this road. I mean, do you see this? Yeah. 
This is what this car is made for. We got some sound out of it. Yeah. Just missing the gurgle and the pop. Yeah. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna get that back eventually. We just gotta figure out what to do. Because you, you definitely weren't going back to stock, so that wasn't even yeah. an option. No, we've we passed that. In this car. Thanks for breaking the car in, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second gear. Nah, that's a cool car, man. Listen, we've got to do the wheels and tires and suspension ASAP. And come back on this road before the snow falls. I'm telling you. Okay. And uh, we'll have some fun with it. I'll take one of my cars and have a good time. I mean, if you think about it, get all ready for the spring. You think about the, the philosophy of a, of a real sports car, you know, lightweight, small two-seater, manual transmission, very analog feel, yeah. you know, uh, you know, British sports cars, the MGs, the Triumphs, yeah. the old Jaguars, Fun you know, cars. that's just, that was the whole design language and engineering philosophy. And that's why those cars were so much fun. It was never about like, hey, look, we have the highest horsepower. Right. It was about that whole package. Sure. And that's what this car has. Well, I mean, even the... Uh even the little Shelby, right? Yeah. I mean, that didn't have a huge engine. It wasn't until no, uh, no, exactly. the guys got an aftermarket and they were putting 427s in it. It's, exactly. it's, it's too light of a car. You don't need all that. No, that's where the car becomes unbalanced and dangerous, I feel. Exactly. And that's, you know, there's a certain thing like with balance in a car. You know, you could exceed that and then yeah. the car can't put the power down, you know, and you could fly off the road and it just doesn't become enjoyable. Yeah, it's fun. Every, every guy wants more power. Sure. But, it has to be a balanced package. You have to have the brakes, the suspension. Everything's got to work together. Right. Because if it's not, you just don't have a balanced car anymore. No, no. The, the, the weight to the weight to power. It's ratio. like a lot of hot rides or race cars. They just go good in a straight line, right. and then they don't stop. They don't handle. Right. And that's really interesting because muscle cars, you know, American muscle cars, were always known to just go good in a straight line right. until everything started progressing with independent rear suspensions and it's like wow these cars finally, actually finally changed that yeah so it, it goes from yeah it goes from like a muscle car to now an actual sports car right that's how good they are but uh and i think that's just what people want they want to get into the car and they want to have fun every time they get in the car not just like hey let's go to the drag show you know you just right. can't you, well, you I mean, can't do it if that's what you want to do then you get a, a drag car Exactly. You just can't do it. And you can spend your hundred thousand dollars on your engine. Yeah. <laughs> do a couple of passes, blow it up, and, and then and then you yeah. Or, or blow it up before you even get onto the track, and then waste your afternoon. Oh man. Tell me. When we were kids, we used to go to English Town. Literally drive out there, take us two hours to get out there. My friends would have their Fox Body Mustangs all worked up. They do one pass, one pass after they waited and prepped the car. Something always broke, and we'd have to get flat bedded back. Every single yep. weekend. Yep. And I said to myself, this is what, what racing's about. It's just not even fun anymore. It's an expensive hobby. Yeah. Very expensive. But if you got the money. There's a dip ahead. I see that. They're warning us. They have the chips with that. Yeah. You, no, can, you can't even uh, bad joke. you can't even uh, beat like a fall day to drive this car, really. Oh, here's the well, you can tell the difference when you drive this car if it's 90 degrees out versus. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turbos don't like high heat. Even though there's, you know, air to water intercoolers and all that. Well, and most cars don't. Features, no. You can tell. You can feel the difference. Like, yeah. I've always felt the difference. Yeah, my Alfa Romeo in this temperature is just. It's a freaking monster. Squirrels. You beep the squirrel. Yeah, I don't want to run. Like he knows to get out of the way. He hears you coming. Look at this. Look at this road. Can you believe this? Wow, nice. Jesus. Oh my god. Could you imagine this in the winter? No. No, you're gonna be. Then you want all the drive. That doesn't even matter. No. I don't care what kind of car you have. This. You don't want to be on this. Do you feel it in your body? Oh, 
feeling? I'm, I'm feeling you twist in the back. Yeah. Where's the dead end? If you're still waiting for the dead end. If you took the traction control over this, we would have been sideways. We would have drifted up this hill. That's actually a good idea. We should do that on the way down. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Dude. I don't even care. I'm having fun. <laughs> we just went in a big U-turn. That's why it's dead end. See? It's, it's going to tell you dead end when we get to the bottom over here. What happened to Jerry? He's, a, I don't, he's right behind us. He must be like, where are you guys going? He's fine. I know he's fine. I'm just having fun, man. Are you kidding me? I'm having fun. It's the one thing you can drive this car and you don't have to worry about like the Shelby going, oh shit, I don't have any gas. Oh, that, are you kidding me? I, I got, I went to a, an you event. told me. I, I literally ran out of gas. And it says nine miles away. I says, oh my God. That's too far. So I shut the air off. I put yeah. it in like normal mode and I'm like praying that I'm going to make it to a fuel station. And put I literally. rain mode. You should put it, it in rain It's mode. like as I pulled into the mo mobile station, literally the car sounded like it was like running oh, on, on half, no, half engine. That's no good either. All right, let's just. Thanks for coming along for the ride on the Fiat 124 Spider. I put a little bit of introductory clips as far as when the car came in, what we started to do to it, uh, some sound bites before and after, just so you guys could get a good idea of what this car is all about. As you guys can see, and I hope I captured it uh, in, you know, in the footage that I provided in this video, the car is an absolute thrill to drive. It is a blast. You can maximize this car at any of your back roads and have fun all day long. I had an extremely amount of fun driving this car for two straight days from the morning till the evening as you guys can see from the video. And uh, it's got a great chassis, outstanding suspension, it's got really good brakes, good ergonomics, good comfort, everything is just good and we're going to be modifying this car further to make it even better. We're going to be doing next video suspension tuning, we're going to do wheels and tires, we're going to be tuning the engine and we're also going to be playing around with a different exhaust system. So I suggest if you guys want to uh, see some more content on this, please like, subscribe and share. Set your YouTube notifications for the next Auto Fanatic video. I had an absolute blast driving this car, I had so much fun with it, I didn't even want to give it back. But uh, like I said, until next time, stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you guys on the next Auto Fanatic video soon.